The next Mass Effect game was announced way back in December 2020 during the Game Awards, and ever since then, Bioware has stayed relatively quiet about its development. That, however, hasn't stopped me from covering small news pieces about the upcoming game, and so just like last year, today I'll be recapping basically everything that we currently know about Mass Effect 4 or 5. First off, as many of you already know at this point, the next Mass Effect game didn't actually start development in 2020, and evidently, at least according to the LinkedIn page of one Michael Gamble, who's the project director on the game, states that at least he has been working on the game since March 2019, a full year and a half before the announcement. Now, together with the release of the teaser trailer, Michael proceeded to announce on Twitter some of the team that he put together all of them being OG Mass Effect staff whose involvement was key to the development of the original trilogy. The first tweet was about Dusty Everman. Dusty was one of the key people responsible for bringing the original Normandy back to life. Dusty decided to rejoin Bioware to work on the next Mass Effect game. There are more like him. We've heard what Mass Effect means to you. Another tweet was about Parrish Lay. Parrish was the cinematic director for the Mass Effect trilogy. Many of the amazing moments were crafted from him and the team. Parrish decided to rejoin Bioware to bring his vision of a new Mass Effect to life. Then we have one about Brennan Holmes. Brennan is a veteran of three Mass Effect games. His ingenuity and work helps to bring amazing gameplay systems to the Mass Effect universe. Brennan is one of many who wants to bring you the game you deserve. As time goes on, you'll get to know more of us. And then he finished off with, oh, and let's not forget Derek Watts, original art director for Mass Effect. He's back too, ready to rock. But announcing some of the core members was not all Michael proceeded to do, as he also started replying to fans who had already started to pick apart the new teaser trailer. One user, Lazare, who also does some amazing Mass Effect art by the way, said, Opening shot also has a very pointed imagery of two galaxies. My mind is racing. Are we going to get a single sequel to both games? Obviously meaning Mass Effect 3 and Andromeda. To which Michael replied, Intentional. And in a follow-up tweet, who knows? Maybe not, but we show both for a reason. Now, speculation aside, as we'll get into that later on, we've seen some pretty big hirings after the announcement. One surprising one was that of fellow YouTube content creator Michael Tucker, known for his channel Lessons from the Screenplay. Now, what his position entails isn't specified, but I would assume that he's advising on narrative and storytelling since that's usually his main subject on his main channel. Another big hiring was that of Mary DeMarle as the senior narrative director for the game. Mary is perhaps mostly known for being the lead writer to Deus Ex Human Revolution and then working as executive narrative director for its sequel, Mankind Divided. She then held the same role for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy that released in 2021, a game that won Best Narrative among others during the Game Awards, so Mary's hiring is pretty massive because of how proficient she's proven to be at spearheading great storytelling. Speaking of storytelling, Michael and Bioware's general manager, Gary McKay, proceeded to confirm that the next Mass Effect will be a single-player game. Whether that means that co-op multiplayer akin to ME3 or Andromeda is out of the picture is entirely up in the air, but it's good to know that they're focused on the single-player part first and foremost. Another big talking point has been surrounding which game engine that the next Mass Effect will use, and all evidence seems to suggest that Bioware will be using the Unreal Engine 5 this time around instead of EA's in-house Frostbite engine, an engine that's caused quite a lot of headache for Bioware in recent years. Now I hesitate to guarantee that this is the case simply because Bioware hasn't officially declared that they're using UE5, so it's definitely still possible that they'll stick to Frostbite but through various job postings and even a tweet by Brennan Holmes where they've literally been asking for people with Unreal Engine experience, we can just assume that this is the case. And this does make even more sense when you consider that the original trilogy were all made in Unreal. And so if the next Mass Effect is supposed to be a direct sequel to ME3, then using Unreal 5 is just a no-brainer, especially when you consider that the core dev team all worked with the Unreal Engine as well. But how do we know that the next game will be a direct sequel to ME3? Well, we can assume as much from various material released by Michael Gamble and Bioware the past few years. First of all, there's the teaser trailer of course, which literally showcases a return to the Milky Way galaxy as we hear various sound bites play in the background, with the horn of a reaper blasting our eardrums at one point. And then the trailer finishes off with the beloved character, Liara Tassoni, picking up a piece of an N7 helmet as she looks to the horizon. 
Now obviously we know that Liara was not on board any of the arcs that ventured to the Andromeda galaxy, and since the starting shot of the trailer shows us zooming into the Milky Way galaxy, it's strongly suggested that we'll be seeing a post-Reaper War story. On N7 Day 2021, Bioware officially released the very first poster for the next game where we see the distinct shape of a geth forming a sort of crater, and at the bottom of the poster we see a four-man team approaching said crater from what we can assume will be the successor to the Normandy SR2. Spread around the crater, there are also several geth and Corian bodies laying about, which suggests that Liara and her team are leading some form of investigation into something pretty dark. Interestingly, according to Bioware GM Gary McKay, there are at least five secrets in said poster, and if you want the breakdown of these then you can check this old video out right here. In any case, this leads us to N7 Day 2022, where we again got a pretty massive teaser, and on the official Bioware blog, Michael Gamble opened with this statement. In the nearly 15 years since the release of the first Mass Effect, the biggest reason we still love working on it is the warmth, dedication, and passion of this community. There are some of you who have been with us through everything. We've grown together, sacrificed Ashley together, Editor's Note, or Kate and Mike, we all make different choices, faced difficulties together, and laughed until our faces were tired. Together. And for those of you who are new to Mass Effect, thanks Legendary Edition, welcome. I can promise that many years of fun, adventures, and characters you'll fall in love with are still ahead. Regardless of when you joined us through four games and more expansions, I can say with certainty that we're in this because of you, and every N7 day is a wonderful reminder of just that. As we look forward, each week is a fun and exciting challenge for the team. We love bringing this universe to life, and although there's much more we want to share with you, that'll have to be for another time. For now, there is something we want you to have a look at. We've intercepted some strange footage from one of the monitoring stations in known space. It could be nothing, but... We then got to see a form of a distorted video where we are apparently looking at a new type of mass relay in construction. In the first video that was released, you can hear a garbled message which was then quickly decoded by some very smart individuals on the internet, and in said message we hear a conversation between Liara and what appears to be that of the Geth. I can see something. How did we miss this? Exactly. The council will be furious, although they should know by now not to underestimate human defiance. These teasers, both the 2021 and 2022 ones, seems to point in the direction that at least Liara and the Geth will have a large part to play in the next game. What that will be is something that only the folks over at Bioware knows about as of today, but that hasn't stopped the entire Mass Effect fanbase from heavily speculating. But to further fuel the speculatory oven, several official concept art pieces have been released as well. One portraying what looks like a team moving towards a big hatch located in a jungle. One portraying what looks like a planet getting terraformed by advanced technology. One of a red-tinted cityscape reminiscent of that of Asari planets like Thessia or Ilium, possibly even being Omega because of the red haze, and another art piece portraying yet another city where you seemingly need breathing masks outside. Now while we can't confirm any of the locations shown here, I think it's pretty safe to say that we will be seeing a lot of new and varied environments in the next game, which is just simply exciting. Now the most recent news were that of Bioware announcing that some Mass Effect developers were moved over to help in the development of Dragon Age 4, or Dreadwolf for short. And while this might sound concerning to some Mass Effect fans because it might mean that development on ME4 slash ME5 will be slowing down, Shifting over staff for different projects is pretty standard for most studios, so it's not really surprising that Bioware is doing this to get Dreadwolf out the gates. Besides, it was confirmed that none of the core developers have been moved over, so I personally don't think that this will affect the development of the next Mass Effect game by much, at most possibly delaying some of the production for a few months. In any case, that has been the most recent update with regards to the next Mass Effect game, and so we've finally caught up to essentially everything we actually know about the game. Which, to be completely fair, isn't very much. <laughs> As always, thank you so much to all my wonderful Ensven Squad members, and do remember to become a member yourself if you haven't already. It really is the best way to support your favorite content creators on YouTube. At least in my knowledge. As always, have a great day everyone. Mr. Olten, signing out.